Got it. <laughs> that was loud. After so much struggle. <laughs> we did it! Yay! <laughs> we did it! We did it. Two non-tech girls trying to do tech things. <laughs> Moms, get on a computer. <laughs> this is so anyway, <laughs> this is like the third time. <laughs> you know, the third time's the charm, as they always say. Welcome to the people that watch this episode. Um, today we are interviewing. and I had a really sick uh, vinyl speaker system set up in our apartment on the capital floor when we were um, younger. And uh, <laughs> we listened to a lot of vinyl. That's going to come back into, into full circle later. But how are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Um, yeah, just living life down here in California. So we had our winter. It's now back to the way that it normally is. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, it was. So jumping but, in, uh, well, do you want to say like a little bit about yourself before I start any questions? Like, um, yeah, so I am a country rock and roll type singer songwriter. I'm from Seattle, Washington originally. Um, and then I've lived in Portland, Oregon and am now in San Diego, California. Um, and I've been a singer songwriter, multi-instrumentalist for many years and throughout many projects. Um, some of those projects have included uh, pop punk band Alabaster, um, kind of folk indie rock band Pufferfish. And then most recently I fronted a, a trio that was an electronic pop trio called Dead Rich. And we had a lot of fun doing that as well. And now I'm a solo artist again. So very happy to be here. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited for your solo project. Um, and like another little snippet about Laura and I, the first time I heard Laura sing was actually at karaoke and she covered her Houston song and I was outside and I was like, who is singing? Like, <laughs> this sounds, I mean, well, and we were already friends, too. Like, I don't think that I had just ever sang in front of you before. Yeah, you didn't. Like, nobody told me about that. And then I heard Dead Rich, and eventually I, I went to one of your shows with you. But I was like, wow. See? It's like, um, I actually forget the name of the guy in Dead Rich. I forget guys. But yeah, you know. Just, they can be forgettable. Women are Whatever easy to remember. He, uh, he, I was like, gosh, that's really tough for him to be like the kind of dual singer project with Laura because that's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, what inspired you to take your work seriously? Um, you know, I thought about this a lot, and I don't think I've ever not taken my work seriously. I think that when you have like when your main passion in life is is music from an early age which which mine was um i think when i've tried to not take it seriously it's made me very depressed because as musicians you know it's such an integral part of who we are um and i think that it's impossible to live re without regret knowing that you didn't really go for it all the way so yeah, I think that that's mainly what inspired me to take it seriously. But um, I think some other things were that I just <laughs> have systematically passed up other opportunities in my life because I wanted to pursue music. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I probably would have been a lot more <laughs> successful in other avenues of my life if I hadn't taken music so seriously. And I think that I've heard Stevie Nicks like say similar things that was like, you know, I, um, especially as women, we have to make so many sacrifices to be able to take music seriously the way that men do, because um, we don't, there's, yeah, the same expectation isn't there. So I, yeah, I, 
<laughs> I think it's the fact that I can't live. I can't think about doing anything else or taking anything else super seriously. Yeah, I think that's a good point about like what's expected of women. And like, I know when Stevie Nicks was recording her Fleetwood Mac album, she was a waitress. And mm -hmm. her dad like said, like, you need to put music. And she said, if it doesn't take off in three months, I won't put my music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also in the doc, yeah. Yeah. Well, in the documentary Sound City, she's interviewed and she talks about, um, you know, her and, and Lindsay there, they got dropped from their label for Buckingham Knicks. And she was talking about um, they didn't have anywhere to live. And so the owner of Sound City put them up. And there's this great moment that she has in the interview because she was that uh, she's like, he, he wouldn't record us. But he gave me a job in his house as the maid and these fancy people would walk through the house and I'd have my little brew and he'd be like, that's the maid. And she was like, but I told myself, I'm not going to be the maid for long. So. She is such an amazing um, role model. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they liked it very much, but well, they all had to stick in the same band together, which sounds like a lot of relationships in life. Yeah, yeah. Well, and um it, God, it's so hard, you know, you tell yourself like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna date other musicians. But it's really hard, you know, when they're out there and looking sexy. So, you know, I feel for Stevie and I feel for Gwen because, <laughs> you know, they can be the worst person in the world and they pick up that guitar and you're like, mm. <laughs> moving on. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> Influences. I mean, Stevie for one, for sure. Um, but I think it's changed a lot over time. I think that I've always been drawn to strong female personalities within music, whether that's the pop acts of the early 2000s that we all grew up with or, um, you know, big country stars of the 90s, like the Dixie Chick, well, the ch just the chicks now, um, and Shania Twain, Faith Hill, Um but right now, I'm really inspired by other alternative country acts. I think that the market, I don't want to say it's saturated with great music right now, but in within my particular genre, there's a real resurgence of the passion for that kind of music. So um, particularly female artists like uh, Nikki Lane, Margot Price, Lana Del Rey. I mean, you and I went to a Lana Del Rey concert together and we had such a great time. Um, even though it was in a completely different city than we thought it was. Oh my gosh. And thank you, Caitlin, for all the times that you let us borrow your car. You are insane for doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah, only one of our friends actually had a car. So. But we drove, we drove that three and a half hours to see Lana and we sped the whole way once we realized it was in Portland and not Tacoma. Um. Oh, and yeah, we also took that car to Tacoma and there was that morning when I woke up and I had to call Caitlin and she answered the phone with, where's my car? And I said, well, it's with Laura. And she said, where's Laura? And I was like, I don't know. Wait. Oh no, it wasn't Tacoma. It was Portland. It was before I moved there. Yeah, we would have gone down the, down to Portland. Whoops. Um, <laughs> um, we always brought it back though. We brought it back damage free. Um, no, but yeah. So anyway, my <laughs> getting back to the point. Um, Dolly Parton, obviously, like you know the big female singers and and male singers of the 60s and 70s country scene um outlaw country has always been a huge influence for me um anything like wild west based whether it's um you know the movies or horseback riding or just appreciating the landscape of the american west i think it's um 
it's a rare gift that we have here is being able to get out and appreciate that. Um, so that that's a big influence of mine too. Oh, um, I forgot. You just said something. Oh, about um, like market saturation. Here's an art like in Japan. It's like writers and fine artists and musicians. But every day when I open Spotify or YouTube or Instagram, I'm looking for that new exciting thing to follow and get into and be excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There really is for everyone. Who are yeah, absolutely. I think that also because just with, within the internet age, our general attention span has gotten so short too, you know, that we're always looking for that like new, new little hit of dopamine. Um, I feel like actually that's why I got into the Grateful Dead really. I mean, I've always liked the dead, but I've gotten more into the Grateful Dead recently because they, so much of their music is recorded live. Right. So they, if you're talking to within the deadhead community, they'll talk about their favorite versions of each song, because if you go back and listen to it each time, it's so different. So you get that little hit of dopamine each time you listen to a different performance of the same song. And I feel that way with new artists, too. Like when I even if it's some top 40 country artist that just has like kind of a banger it does give me that little, um, I think Marie Kondo calls it like a spark of joy, you know? So I feel like people look for that a lot nowadays, just with the endless scrolling and all the flashy ads and stuff that we're exposed to. Just, just something, give it to me. Anyway, yeah. just kidding. Uh, beautiful thing, Portsmouth. So tell us about what you do highlight your favorite moment from your journey. Um, I think that like in particular, uh, when my band Alabaster played Warp Tour, that was a really full circle moment for me. I think because it was something that I had dreamed of as a kid. Like I'd heard about the Warp Tour. I, I had a super strict parents, so I never got to go as a teenager. But um, a few years later, I was in this band and, and we got the opportunity to play. And, you know, we played the earliest slot on the smallest stage at the opening of the festival. Um, but I didn't care. Like, I didn't care that we were the lowest build artist. I was like, I'm an artist on Warp Tour and I could carry that with me for my whole life. So that was a really big deal. Um, opening for like bigger bands that I had admired when I was younger. So um, like opening for Switchfoot and Yellow Card were really big moments. And then, um, yeah, just I think moments where when you see your creative vision come to life, uh, this uh, uh, one particular moment was uh, we were playing a uh, thing called Upstream Music Festival with Dead Rich. Um, and that was a really cool festival in Seattle that was put on by Paul Allen before he passed away. And I had this um, vision of, you know, it, it was kind of our one of our band members had a long DJ set and he wanted us to each come in and do a song individually with him. So it was going to be four singer artists and I had the idea to um have us just hanging on the sides of the stage but like cloaked figures you know he kind of like had a goth hip-hop thing going on so we we're standing there with these candles and everybody was like is this gonna work is this gonna look super tacky or whatever but you know we stood there with these candles like still as statues for this whole thing and there's this rapper uh Henry <laughs> next to me and he was he was just like sweat like he was I could see him shaking and like the sweat running down but when the first solo came and you know they threw off the cloak and people were like they're actually people and that was so cool and um it was that was a really cool moment too because it was we it was this thing where you know it was really off the wall and it could have looked really bad <laughs> but it ended up just being amazing I love but yeah that was pretty cool too like really theatrical in your performances too just yeah really experimental off the wall thing um yeah like i don't know i don't want to see anybody do like i mean even if you're a cover band i don't want to see you do a music 
version of an iron. Man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I feel like that's why female cover bands do so well also. Mm, like, sense. you know, up in Seattle, we have like uh, Zeparella and Hell's Bells is a big one. Like they, 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 I feel like it's always a little bit unexpected when people see girls shred like Angus Young. <laughs> and, um, there was Iron Maiden cover band there. That, uh, Pandora You're right. What were they called? Are there any themes you are expressing in your music? And let's talk about the project you're doing now. Um, yeah, so I would say like definitely mysticism is something that is I explore throughout my throughout my music, whether it's the kind of music that I'm doing now or whether it's with a rock music or, or you know, an electronic or pop project. I think that those are always themes that I I'm drawn back to because it's such a part of my life and who I am, as you know. Um, you know, I'm very witchy woo woo and all of the wonderful things that come along with that. So it's something I think about a lot. <laughs> um, but also I think that the female experience, you know, as someone who is was born female and identifies as female, it's, it's hard to detangle myself from that. Um, and even in terms of, of love and heartbreak and um, freedom, those are, those are things that I express in my music a lot. Um, but really, I think that it's mostly has to do with uh, articulating things that are difficult, feelings that are difficult to articulate uh, in a prosaic way, whether that's, you know, uh, like a fuck you feeling or like a, a loving feeling or um like a feeling of of wonderment or or uh mysterious stuff i don't know <laughs> i don't know if that answers the question i think so i am super excited to hear a country rock solo album from such a talented singer that has so much in it i am yeah. excited to ask you how many crystals you own right now how many what? How many crystals you own right now? Um, well, <laughs> I inherited a lot from you. So all of the ones that you owned before you moved to Sweden. And then um, I have my own. If, if I were on a phone, I would show you're actually on my coffee table right now. But I put them all in one place in this glass display coffee table. But I would say I have over 200. For sure. You actually gave me this one. Oh, yay. <laughs> it's an angel aura. And then, you know, that's not even counting most of the ones that I have on my jewelry, et cetera. Um, I could probably start a small shop now if I wanted to, but they're mine. I'm, I hoard them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Got these ones. I got this. this. <laughs> You're basically just living inside of crystal caves at this point, but... Um... It's, sometimes I wonder, like, am I really feeling what I'm feeling or is it the crystals? <laughs> is it some crystal talking to me? Is it some genie that I need to release? Okay, wait. Let's, all right. So um, are there any upcoming projects you would like to give us, uh, like, some kind of time frame on the um, Yes. So my... First single, Roadway In, is in the last stages of production right now. So that should be in distribution soon. And you can find that on Spotify or Apple Music or YouTube or anywhere you get music. Um, and then the rest of my album is still in production. Um, I am going to be releasing a full-length album later this year that's going to be called Scabland. Um, so I'm very excited to get all that done and kind of have that on the books because I don't know if this is your experience or not, but when I, by the time one album is done or like one recording is done, I already have the next one ready. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so sick of these songs. Yeah, I think, I, I mean, like we probably already wrote two albums of songs and it's just like, all of the uh, the well, you know, it takes a long time to make an album, which is yeah. Um, yeah. So, hmm, 
if your music were a movie soundtrack, what movie would you choose? Or if you can't think of one that it would fit, what would the movie be about? Oh, well, it would definitely be a Western. <laughs> I, I play country Western music. Um, there's this one film with Sharon Stone and Leonardo DiCaprio in it. I think it's called The Quick and the Dead. Um, and then there's this other one that if you haven't seen it, you would love this film. It's just like kind of a, just a stupid buddy com comedy at the end of the day. But it's called Bandidas and it stars Salma Hayek and Penelope Cruz as these like bestie train robbers and so <laughs> yeah and the bad guy is Dwight Yoakam and I love Dwight Yoakam so <laughs> um, <laughs> um and uh I don't I guess like Thelma and Louise or Raising Arizona that was like a lot of my music has a lot to do with driving I'm as you know I'm super obsessed with anything that has a motor in it, whether it's a car or a motorcycle or a boat. I just love driving things. And so I um, I always feel the most inspired when I'm like driving through a desert scene. So I think that if there were, if there were a movie, it'd be something, you know, where you got that like highway shot with the cacti along the, yeah. Yeah. Just go back to that boat that you ripped off some of the music videos you'll see in the future. Oh my gosh, remember when I was working at that restaurant on the lake and we drove up in this boat? Oh my God. Like, yes. Me. And then my dad picked us up on his boat and we got even more drunk with my sister. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that wasn't the worst of that night. I ended up in the hospital the next day. Wait, I think you're talking about something else that we're not going to talk about on this thing. <laughs> but anyway, um, last question. How do you like to stay centered and entertained when you're not uh, working with music? Um, nature is a huge one for me. Like getting out where I am amongst plants and animals and non-human things, non-human living things um, are a great comfort to me as I am a, a dog mom. So I love being around my dogs. Um, and then just, you know, moving my body also, I think has become more of a comfort to me now than it was before. Um, now that I'm getting older and I'm thankful that I can. <laughs> So just keeping that, keeping myself centered. I do a lot of yoga. Um, so that's that's a great help too. I, I am also a writer. I'm working on a fun project right now that I can't wait to unveil. So that will be fun too. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, being, being in stillness is so important because as musicians, we're always thinking about, it's so easy to get the next thing in your head, you know, like the next lyric, the next riff, the next melody, or, you know, the next asshole from your past that you're going to write a song about. <laughs> like, aye, aye, aye. <laughs> so I think that like, I have, particularly since I stopped drinking, um, I've sought out those moments of stillness a lot more than I had before, just because, you know, it's, you got to have that balance in your brain. Otherwise you just get to in into it. <laughs> okay. so we have one last thing we're going to do, and it's going to be a lightning round game. I'm going to okay. two pieces of vinyl, and you have to pick one. Okay. <sighs> Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to go with. I'm going to have to go with Donna on that one. You don't even like Kate Bush. I do like Kate Bush, but I, I, I like Hounds of Love. That's like my favorite album of hers. Ooh, oh, I'm going to have to say Janet. I'm going to have to go with Janet. I probably would have picked 
Although I, I love Bonnie Tyler, but I worked at a karaoke bar for too long. I have, oops, um, I have a really challenging one here. Okay. Why are you doing this to me? I'm going to go with Coven just because it's a live version of Tina and you never know what live albums are going to sound like. They could be amazing or really bad. Tina, she doesn't sound bad ever. <laughs> but um I I think so too. I don't I I don't know though. I've I've heard some really bad live albums by really good artists. All right, this is the last round even though I have so much more that I would love to challenge you with. Okay. I'm going to go with Patty Smith. Patty Smith over Cher. Patty Smith. Yeah, I I had this amazing experience. I um I was in Sweden and I was with my cousins at the Stockholm Jazz Festival and Patti Smith played and her band did this big build up and she's reciting this poem about Stockholm and oh my gosh. Yes, I love that. <laughs> well, yeah, we can talk about that and you can post it. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Isn't that uh, so well, thank you. The computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we figured it out eventually. <laughs> we didn't really. We just found a different way to do it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. We'll continue this conversation over the phone. Blah, blah, blah. Bye.